Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So today we've got a review and demonstration on another spray gun. So the spray gun is what I would still class as the best cheap spray gun on the market. And saying that, I mean anything cheaper than this, I personally would not use on the exterior panels of a car. So yeah, for me, those ultra cheap spray guns, look, they're really not going to last and I also wouldn't use them on anything but maybe some engine components, brake calipers, or things that you really don't mind too much if the finish isn't that great. So this gun here is called the FLG5. It's definitely no stranger to the channel. It's always got rave reviews from me, and I know that I have actually pointed many people in the direction of this gun, of whom most people have been very impressed with it. Now, I have actually had one person say one thing that they didn't like about this gun. Personally, I think it's a bit of a trivial criticism, and look, at the end of the day, you're welcome to think what you like of a spray gun, but you can see there how I've actually pulled the air cap away from its retaining ring, and it doesn't have some sort of a circlip on the inside of that air cap to keep the two parts from separating, say, when you're doing the cleaning or whatever it may be. Now, most spray guns admittedly do have something to keep those two parts together, but as I say, I just see it as being a bit of a non-issue. At the end of the day, it's a $200 spray gun. It's really not expensive. If $200 is too much for you to spend on a spray gun, well, then maybe you shouldn't even be spraying a car. At the end of the day, you're probably going to be spending minimum $500 on the paint to spray a car if you're doing a, a, a full respray. So if you can't afford $200 on a spray gun, well, then you probably shouldn't really be painting the car, you know. Hey, I'm, I'm all down for saving money and, you know, getting ahead in life and all that kind of stuff, but there's still a limit to, you know, you need to have a little bit of quality and you're going to pay for quality, aren't you? But yeah, I'm one of those people that, like, when I buy something that I don't get good value for, I kick myself for it. Like, so it's one of those things that, look, I've been pretty openly critical of Sada Jets and even to a lesser extent, some of the top end NS Diwata, like the Supernovas, like they're a really expensive gun. Here in Australia, you're looking at, or I think around like $900 to $1,000. It's one of those things that I put myself in the position, even though I do get these guns for review purposes. So again, I did actually get this gun from Spray Guns Direct to do a review on, and on that topic there will be a link in the description. But what I was getting to before is that I put myself in the position of, hey, if I spend a thousand dollars on this spray gun, would I really be happy with that purchase? And most of the time the answer is no, because there's guns like this that you can get for two hundred dollars that do the same thing. And hey, don't get me wrong, like I'm not saying that this is gonna be like the next game changer that every painter needs one and it's going to be every painter's top gun. No, look, at the end of the day, it's one of those things that it's a great handy gun to have. It's one of those ones that because it's not so expensive, you, you're not so precious with it, I guess. You know, you can put whatever material you want through it. And as you can see here, like I've got some black paint in it. That's actually the first um, job that I'm about to spray with it. So we're about to go into the spray booth, but it's actually a good color to do some tests with on like some uh, bits of cardboard there. And you can actually see that it's a really nice um, even fan pattern. Now I mentioned that because I actually had a thousand dollar plus spray gun being a Sada jet and a couple of them and the fans were uneven like dead set I can't remember if it was top or bottom heavy but they were uneven and since I've had many a people like as I said before I've only had one person that ever criticized the FLG5 and that was because of that um, retaining ring around the air cap yet I've actually had many people say that their Sada uh, 5500X with the eye pattern on it have actually been top heavy and not spraying quite right. So yeah, I must admit that was pretty surprising to have happen from Sada Jet and um, yeah, like lots of people had exactly the same thing happen but let's not focus too much on that. We're really here to see how this FLG5 1.3 performs. So the main reason I'm doing an updated video on this is because this gun never used to be available in 1.3 mil fluid tip. So yeah, it used to just be the 1.4 and the 1.8. And I must admit that I'm really impressed. Like, I'm not going to go and say, oh, I'm totally blown away by how this gun sprays. But 
I'm very impressed. It really does make a reasonable difference. So I've got the 1.4 and I swear I use it just about every day. It's the gun that I use for direct gloss 2K VOC top coat. Um, and I also use it for my wet on wet or non sanding primer. So yeah, the 1.4, I use it on the daily. So I'm going to notice any differences, um, yeah, more because I do actually use the 1.4 very often. And yeah, going to the 1.3, it's just got that finer atomization because it doesn't let as much fluid out. So some people have actually said to me in the past, they said, oh, why don't you just wind the fluid in? And that was actually when I was criticizing the way some of the um, the starter jets actually throw a little bit too much material out. Now, I used to like to wind the fluid in, but these days I actually reckon that a gun actually sprays a little bit different at full fluid. So I've actually found that you are better off getting the fluid tip size to suit the material. It's not always as simple as winding the fluid in, if you know what I mean. I actually do think it changes the way that a gun sprays. So what you see me spraying now is Standock Stano Blue, which is a waterborne base coat. And yeah, it's a metallic color, so it's gonna be clear over base. So this is the base coat stage now. And if you hang around for a couple more minutes, we'll be going through the clear coat stage as well. But yeah, I must say, I was really impressed how well this uh, sprays the Standox Waterborne base coat. So I actually had a guy leave a comment, it's probably about a year ago now, and he said, oh, you know, it's a pity that you can't use the FLG5 with uh, Waterborne base coats. And I said, um, who told you that? And he actually posted a link. So he came back with a link of, there was some website, I can't even remember who it was that, whose website it was, but yeah, it said a solvent spray gun. And I'm thinking, well, I don't think that that's true. And it's not true. You can see here that it's it's spraying the Ward 1 base coat absolutely fine. So look, they're, they're, you're not even gonna have any issues as far as like, these guns aren't just going to rust out. They're not just made out of steel. They're made out of stainless steel and aluminium. So as long as you're not using tap water, which does have the imperfections of um, the minerals and all that kind of stuff in which can cause corrosion. As long as you're using the demineralized water and some ethanol or alcohol cleaner to clean the gun out, you're not going to have any issues. And that's what I do. I just get like a big 20 liter drum of ethanol and I've got like a 20 liter drum of demineralized water. I mix the two together, put them into one of those pump bottle sprayers, the brake cleaner sprayers, which you saw me using at the very start of the video when I was checking the fan. And that's what I use to clean these guns out. And yeah, it does absolutely fine. You, you will not do any damage to the gun. And as I say, it's going to spray these waterborne materials, no issues at all. So it's one of those things that using the 1.4 for the waterborne base coat is probably a little bit overkill. Maybe in the middle of summer, you might want to go the 1.4 if you really need to throw lots of material out. But here at the moment, we're in winter, so I really don't want to throw that much material on the panel. You can actually end up running into issues if you get too much material on there. It can just take too long to dry. But on the other hand, you don't want it to be drying as you're applying. So in the middle of summer, you might actually find that the, the extra speed of the 1.4 uh, does help you and helps you get a little bit more material on but yeah the 1.3 in these conditions Absolutely yeah, it killed it man. It really did very well It's one of those things that I, I think to myself sometimes if the latest fill in the blank developer starter or I water if the latest of their guns of their flagship guns sprayed exactly like this I swear you would have people just gushing over it, they'll be like, oh, the latest supernova, or the, the latest I want it, or the latest developers that I just spent a thousand dollars on, mind you, um, because, you know, it's got all the bells and whistles on it. Um, oh, this thing is the best gun I've ever used. I kid you not, there would be people saying that. But yeah, it's one of those things that if you're someone who just wants something to do that specific job and to do it really well, go for it. This is, you know, the perfect gun for someone who's not a spray painter. And I say that because it operates, it's really easy to operate. I was actually thinking about that when I was spraying this job. I was thinking, oh, what kind of commentary? What am I going to say to people about this gun? And I was thinking that, I was thinking, it's just so easy to set up. So I'm spraying, um, I actually spray this whole job at two bar, so base coat and clear coat, two bar pressure, which is 29 PSI. 
open the fan right up, open the fluid right up, set it at two bar pressure, and off you go, man. It's just gonna, it's just gonna do what you need it to do. Actually, I do recall down the bottom section of that bumper, you might have seen me uh, adjusting the air pressure, and I did actually lower the pressure down to 20 psi just to make sure that it still sprays well at that pressure, and it does. So that's actually a bonus of this gun that. It does have a wide operating um, uh, pressures, I guess. So you can go all the way down to 20 psi, or possibly even lower if you really wanted to. Um, but then you can go up to like 35. I mean, I've found that with the 1.3, it's not really necessary to go up that high. However, with the 1.4 mil, for whatever reason, I've found that if you really want to get a flat finish on say like a bonnet or something like that, crank that pressure up and it just slams that clear on really nice and flat. But as I say, I found it not really necessary with the 1.3. I think I'll actually have to do a bit of a follow-up video to this and show you guys how this gun sprays the silvers because that's probably one of my biggest uh, criticisms of this gun is that it doesn't have the biggest fan on it, so it doesn't have the biggest fan height. Um, some of the other guns or most of the other guns that I use just have that little bit bigger. It's not even a massive amount. It might only be, say, half an inch or an inch higher of a fan pattern on it, but it does seem to make a big difference and that was specifically more noticeable with solvent based base coat so when you're spraying a solvent based silver you really need that wider fan pattern to get a nice even distribution of the silver base coat so I actually have a feeling that this gun is going to be better for spraying waterborne than solvent based base coat which is what I find to be the funniest thing about that website that said that this is a solvent based spray gun. So yeah it's one of those things that I'm yet to find any material that it doesn't atomize at the end of the day it's just a spray gun put a liquid in it and it will spray it. So yep absolutely a channel favorite has only just got better with now we've got an extra choice of fluid tips available. A $200 spray gun, you can hardly go that wrong. Worst case scenario, you get it, you say, hey, I don't like this one for clear. Gunny gets it looking like glass. What am I doing wrong? I don't know. I'm going to use it for a 1K gun. You know, 1K primer. Use it for your little cut throughs or whatever. Use it for your etch primer. Use it for whatever. But it, the way I say it, for 200 bucks, you can hardly go wrong. But as I say, this is laying this clear down like absolute glass. <laughs> I mean, as I say, like, I'm not totally blown away because I already do know how good these guns are because I already do use the, the 1.4 on a daily basis, pretty much anyway. Another thing I forgot to mention earlier is that it's really efficient. Like, you look at the overspray, so that's at 29 PSI or 2 by, as I mentioned before. It's really not that bad as far as overspray goes. So I ended up over-mixing on this job here by, like, 200 mils of clear. I don't usually get it that wrong. I actually expected that I was going to use a fair bit more clear than what I ended up needing. So, yeah, look, it's capable of getting really nice finishes. It's cheap. What else can you ask for out of a spray gun? But obviously, another big part of me liking these guns is they're made really well. Like, they're made... You know that when you open a box of a brand new tool or anything, really, like... You don't have to pull that thing apart completely top to toe to know whether or not it's a well-made thing. You know what I mean? Like, it's like those MGs. They're brand new MGs, but they are just crap. They are made in China by Saic Motors. MG have just sold their name out to the highest bidder, which was obviously China. Now this is, you know, a spray gun obviously, but you know when you open that box up and you hold that thing in your hand, you know you've got a pretty well made tool in your hand. So yeah, it's one of those things that they're made well, they perform well, they're ex they're not overly expensive, they're cheap. Mate, they're, they're a great gun. They really are, and that's my honest opinion. So as always, I did get the gun as purpose of review from Spray Guns Direct, but the opinions are solely my own, and I think I would be doing my audience and the spray painting world an injustice if I didn't let you guys know how good these spray guns are. As I mentioned before, there will be a link in the description of this video of where you can go and get one of these guns. I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone for watching and if you'd like to support the channel further, you're more than welcome to go over and check out some of the merchandise we've got. My personal favorite is those spray suits. So they're a good quality collab 
branded spray suit with a gunman logo on it there's also hats drink coolers hoodies and t-shirts so be sure to go over and check out the link in the description if you are interested all that aside i'd just like to say a big thanks for watching and that is enough to support the channel but as i say if you'd like to go the next step then be sure to check out some of that merchandise thanks for watching and until next time get out there and paint some shit gunman out